Hey friends, Gary Schobel, joining you here on another video from Ride Network. Today we're going to take a look at a maintenance issue. Um, a lot of people get intimidated uh, by bottom brackets. Well, I'm not at my garage, but I'm at the station and uh, my buddy Jason has taken his bike apart and he's putting a new bottom bracket bearing in. So we are going to join him. He's got the bike taken apart. Uh, and he's going to walk us through the reassembly of um, uh, the do's and don'ts on it, uh, if you happen to have the same type of bottom bracket. But I'm sure Jason will uh, talk to you a little bit about the differences as he's assembled. Okay, and as you can see, Jason's already removed the bottom bracket, the shell, and the bearings from the frame. So we're going to talk about how that was done and the tools that he needed to do that job. So as you can see on this table, I have all the tools you'll need for the removal of the crankset, the old bottom bracket bearing, as well as the install of your new bottom bracket. So specifically today, I'm working with the Shimano Holotech 2 system and it requires uh, a special tool and it's a star pattern that go, it's a key on the non-drive side and you can find it either on the bottom bracket removal wrench right here, or Park Tool sells a specific key that has a small hook at the end of it to get a sleeve on the non-drive side up to remove that non-drive crank arm. So I have here my drivetrain, and I'm gonna show you the last steps of the removal process. So this is my non-drive side. What you're going to want to do, you're going to take your 5mm Allen key, you're going to loosen up the sides, and you're going to do a little bit at a time on each side to make sure that you're not causing damage to either the crank arm or the spindle. And once you get that loose enough, you're going to loosen up this key, and I already got it loosened up a little bit for you. Loosen it up like so. And at this point, you're not gonna be able to get this crank arm off just yet. There's a small little hook right here, and this is what it's designed for. This little sleeve right here pops up, and it allows you to get this arm off. At this point, we got the non-drive side arm off, and we're left with something that looks similar to this. Um, you want your, This is where your rubber mallet comes into play. You're not going to be able to just pull the drive side crank off. It's going to take a little effort. So you get a mallet. I happen to cover it with a small towel um, just to kind of take some of the shock away. And you don't just want to beat on this spindle. It can damage your frame. So you want to brace the frame a little bit too while you're hitting it. And you're just going to give it some light taps to kind of get it started. And once you get it out enough, you're going to brace the frame and you should be able to pull it out. And if you can't, just tap it a little more with the mallet. And you may need to wiggle it a little bit, but eventually you will get your non drive side. I have the crank set off. What was left in my, my bottom bracket was sitting like so. I had the sleeve that was pressed against the frame, and then I had the external bearing uh, threaded into the actual uh, sleeve here. So what I ended up doing, took my bottom bracket removal tool, loosened it up till I got to this point, and then I was able to hand loosen this bottom bracket until I was able to remove it, and the cup remained in the actual bike like so. I did that to both sides, and then once I was left with the cups, I took my bottom bracket or bearing removal tool I stuck it in the other side of the bottom bracket. I took my tool, stuck it in the other side of my bottom bracket, and I made sure that the prongs were against the actual sleeve and not the frame. And then I slightly tapped it out until it popped out. And I did the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now we got our cups and our bearings off 
and the bottom bracket is exposed itself. So this is your time to clean it out, make sure that you got all the extra grease or anything else that was kind of in there. You get that out and you want to visually inspect the bottom bracket itself. You want to make sure that frame is nice and intact, don't have any cracks. Um, you want a good clean surface to work with when you're installing that new bottom bracket. Jason, what kind of solvent would you consider using for cleaning it off that it wouldn't damage your carbon fiber? You know, I, I generally am going to use a dry rag. However, um, if you need to, to get some grease, you can always use simple green or any sort of um, degreaser. Use it lightly. I prefer just using a dry rag though. Great. So now we got the bottom bracket cleaned out nice and thoroughly and we're ready for the install. Now, if you want to give your bike a good thorough clean and re-grease and all that, this would be the time to do it, but I had already done that, so now we're going to go to the install. Okay, so for this install today, we're going to need, first of all, our Praxis bottom bracket, our headset press, some anti-seize, we're going to need some waterproof grease. Uh, I'm using the Park Tool PPL1, and we're going to need two bottom bracket wrenches. Okay, so we're getting ready to prep our Praxis bottom bracket here and a set of instructions comes with the bottom bracket. The side we're looking at now uh, gives you safety information, written directions, the required tools, and what is included with your bottom bracket. And it has the order in which things need to go from your drive side to your non-drive side. And then if we flip this over, it gives you a visual step by step on how to do the install, where to apply the grease, where to apply the NICs. Okay, so we have our bottom bracket here. This is for the uh, BB30 or PressFit30. Shimano Holotech 2. This is going to be our left side or non-drive side and you can differentiate that because it comes with the sleeve and it's attached. This is going to be our right side or our drive side bearing. If you have a PressFit 30, we're going to leave this sleeve on. If you have a BB30, you're going to take the sleeve off. All right, so I had already applied my anesthes to the uh, bottom bracket sleeve. Now I need to apply grease to the cover for the press fit 30. So we're going to apply grease to the outer edges here. And if you have a painter's brush, that works good. Or if not, you can just kind of do as I'm doing and use your fingers like so. And now we're going to put this sleeve over the bearing like so. so. Now we are installing the bottom bracket, it's greased, we got the NICs, and we're putting in the non-drive side. So we want to make sure that when we install it, that it goes in straight. So we're going to push this in by hand as far as we can. We got it nice and greased. So we want to make sure that it's lined up with the other side. And that's about as far so as we've seen. We've attached our headset press and now we're going to be pressing the non-drive side into the frame. Specific for this bottom bracket, there's a tolerance o-ring right at the edge here. It's kind of hard to see, but in big bold letters on the instructions, it specifically states do not compress this o-ring. So we're just going to tighten this till that tolerance ring touches this frame. And while we're doing this, we're, that it's going in evenly. And we just go in slowly because we don't want to compress that o ring.
Okay, now, now we we're it. on to the drive side or the right side, and we're going to be applying grease to this portion. Now we've got some rings that we need to apply afterwards. So like I had mentioned earlier, you can use your finger, paintbrush, or however you see fit to get this grease on there. We're going to apply this plastic ring, then our orange rubber O-ring, and now Around the threads, we're going to apply a coat of anti-seize. Okay, so we got our anti-seize and grease on our uh, drive side. We're going to hand thread this as much as we can, and then we're going to grab our bottom bracket wrenches. So our bottom bracket, our new bottom bracket is installed. Now it's time to put the crank set back on. Uh, first, I begin by applying grease around both the drive side and the non-drive side prior to putting it through the bottom bracket. All right, so that we got that side on. Now it's time to put the non-drive side in. Start with the star cap, we're going to grease this up. Okay, just like we had taken it off, we're going to put it on in the reverse order. So. We're going to take the star cap and put it on. We're going to grease it. And you can use the bottom bracket wrenches or that Park Tools specific Hollow Tech wrench. I'm going to use the park tool. We're just going to tighten it down. All right. We're as tight as we get. We want to make sure that little sleeve is down as well. And now we're going to grab our five millimeter Allen keys. And similarly, we're going to go and we're going to tighten them. We're not going to tighten one side and then tighten the other completely we're going to rotate. And when you're tightening your crank arms down, just make sure you are tightening them down to manufacturer specifications. You don't want to over tighten your, your crank arms and you also don't want them too loose. So we are finished putting our bottom bracket on and our crank set back on and now we have a free spinning bottom bracket. Bottom bracket. Great job Jason. Thank you. And thanks for watching.